Prophet Jesus. Give me address, Father. Give me address, Jehovah. Give me address, Jesus. Give me address, Father. Give me address, God. Open my mouth. Let me speak of your glory. Open my mouth. Let praise come inside me. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jehovah, we thank you. Now, the last prayer that I want you to pray. It is dangerous for you to come into the house of God and you go back empty. So I want you to lift up a prayer and tell God, Father, anything that can distract me from getting what I'm supposed to get today, Lord, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. If there is a prophecy for me, let me receive it. If there is a rema word for me, let me receive it. If there is instruction, let me receive it. If there is a, 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 a direction that you need me to hear, let me receive it. Open your voice and tell God, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of the Lord come. Power is in our hands. Power is in our voice. Right now we come and get this. Every destruction power. Every destruction power. Everything that can hinder your move. Everything that can hinder us from accessing you. From listening to you. From understanding your word. In the name of Jesus. We render it powerless. We render it powerless. In the name of Jesus. We render it powerless. In the name of Jesus, I stand against every confusion. I delicate, I vandalize every power to the glory of God. I break every spirit of communication that can be written here in the name of Jesus. I save every power of the enemy, every stronghold of the devil in the name of Jesus. Come on, raise up your power. Break every power of the enemy in the name of Jesus. I come against every spirit of destruction out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. We have sound mind. We have sound mind. Asante Yesu. Lord, everything Jesus. Holy Spirit. Now, if you can speak in tongues, open up your mouth and just speak in tongues. Can I have five, just five people who can speak in tongues? Madela Katosi, Lipi Kaleka, Labo Kasekeleketeka, Lota Te Serebe, Makela Katiliata, Esibi Kande. Lord, we thank you. Now put those hands high and just glorify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I say put them high and just glorify the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Is that the best you can do to give it to God? If there is breath inside you, celebrate his name. Celebrate his name. Hallelujah. Let me 
look at someone and just confess the love of God to them, eh? As we enjoy the environment. Oh, hey. what Someone else, Anna Kujali. Anna I need you to converse with someone. Anna Kupenda. Anna Kupenda. You know, now it is okay. You have been close to that neighbor for 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 like for 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 okay now just do me a favor go to someone else you don't know or someone you didn't come with it one of uh, one of our pillars is, is warmth amen uh, we fellowship so can you do that can you do that uh, fellowship with someone it is dangerous to praise god when you don't have that warmth with them oh.
I can only hear him. I want to hear on the right, on the left, on the left, everywhere. See you. Hey. Can you just declare that? We just say he's a king of kings. Whoa. The King of Kings. Sema wewe ni falwe. Declare to even on a sema yeni falwe. Sema. Okay, can you help me and just clap your head like this? Everybody. Sema falwe, come on. Sim, 
This is a celebration service. Wapi ululeson kwa kina mama eh. Ah, you say this. Big you are the biggest. Strong you are the strongest. Great you are the greatest. You are the mighty, mighty God. Yeah. 
Jesus reigns. Ah. 
Silica. Lord, you reign, Jesus. Father, you reign in this place. Father, you reign in this place. Jesus, you reign in this place. Jehovah. Hey, Kata. Rebo Kassele.
was seated at the right hand of the Father. You are holy, holy. Uh, is there someone who declare holy, my God? Uh, you are holy, uh, holy. You are holy.
face and say, Father, you are holy. You were sacred, you were sanctified. Jesus, you are holy. You were incorruptible. You were in a glass all by yourself. Father, you are holy. You have made all things, but you are sacred from everything. Jesus, you today who understands that even in the situation you are in even in the thing you are facing right now there is God there is a God whose word is yes and amen there is a God whose word is first and last there is a God who is Alpha and Omega there is a God who is beginning and the ending there is a God who sits upon the circle of the earth. There is a God who rises on the wings of the eagle. 
There is a God who rides on the cherubim. There is a God. There is a God who brings healing on the Son of Righteousness. There is a God who is stronger than every disease. There is a God. He's stronger than every situation. He can move every mountain. He can part every sea and river. There is a God. I came to talk about this God. Say, you were shut up. Provider, you are the great I am forever. You are the great I am. Let me hear the congregation say. Twenty twenty-three. Make the declaration of the God you believe in. Raise your voices in this place. Call him here. Bush. Raise those voices higher than that. Call him healer, provider, the great I am, faithful. Voices in this place. You are the great I am. You are the great I am. You are present in everything, in every situation. You are the great I am. You are I am the resurrection and the life. You are everything. You said I am the bread of life and the breath of life. We call you healers. You are the great. in this place. Lift up your voices. Magnify the Lord. Give him all the glory. He's worthy to receive adoration. He's worthy to receive all honor. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Shit, I don't know. 
Bali to Metoka Amahali to Mefika Dio mana inatambua Kwamba wewe ni ebeneza Sio kwa uwe
to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. Please be seated this afternoon. If you were not already seating. Are you well today? Yes. I've been teaching in the kingdom service about trusting God. And uh, even as we make our plans for the year, we have to involve God. So that he can guide us, he can lead us, he can direct us. We cannot make the assumption that we know where we are going. So we need God's direction in everything we are doing. And every moment spent in the presence of God comes back to us. Yeah. Good measure. Press, Press down. down. Except the Lord builds a house, those that build it labor in vain. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I want to release the children. Kindly have the children come to the front. In the hello, Memoya, oh, in well, in the Colome, Cosia, in the Colome, Tico, Dima, Mele. The blessing of God over these children right now. The blessing of peace, prosperity, protection, provision, performance, perfection. We pray over everyone that handles them, right from home to school to church, that they will be instruments of blessing. The words of their mouth will build these children. We pray in the name of Jesus that none of these children shall be lost Amen. or lose their way. Amen. They shall be mighty upon the earth. Amen. This is our declaration from this altar. Amen. None shall fail, none shall faint, Amen. none shall fall off, Amen. none shall lose their purpose Amen. to the glory of God. Amen. We pray the crowning of the anointing over their lives and that of their teachers, parents and handlers everywhere else that they are. We bless their entire week that even in school they shall excel. They shall be ten times wiser than the other children to the glory of God. And in Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Children, you may go. You may go to your class. Kuluma, Kuluma, Kosia, Kuluma, Dima, Kuluma, Kosia, Kuluma, Baba. Kuluma, 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 Kulu
Mababab To God. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Shoo. Uh. See, I was telling you about what I've been teaching in the kingdom service. Yes, Trust in God. Mm. And you've got to hear God for every step that you go. Mm. So this year, the Lord has instructed every month we have a worship experience. So if we're wearing you out, we will wear you out. Every month, every month, we'll have a worship experience. Amen. Beginning the fifth. It's actually your worship thing that made me shift. But beginning the fifth of March, every month. There are certain battles you will win Amen. by the power of worship. Amen. We were in Mombasa two weeks ago. Uh, the first day, I'd gone to do something else somewhere in Diani. Then we went to Mombasa uh, to speak. So I had part of the team with me, Edith, Okami, and Judith. And the first day of the meeting, so we do the worship. And like it's the manner of some, sometimes people come into a service and then they'll be standing over there. They're wondering, why is this preacher extending the worship? So when I was done, I said, I want everybody who came in here sick to check yourself just to prove to you that Jesus was in what we were doing. And they will tell you, growths disappeared yeah. while we were worshiping. So when we came in and worshiping, it's, it's not that, oh, he loves singing. <laughs> he loves, they sing for too long. Sometimes God sets an operating theater and somebody needs God to perform a surgery. Do you hear what I'm talking about? Glory be to God. Amen. Are we ready to give? Then I will teach. I can promise you from my side I will not take long. I can only promise from my side. Anybody who's here for the very first time, never been here with us before, it's your very, very first time to New Birth Covenant Church, Tsiokimao. Very first time on a Sunday. Anybody? Anybody? Is there anybody? Okay, there's a hand right there. Praise God. I appreciate it. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming after the service. Please meet this lady over here. I'd be glad to see you and to meet you. If you have your tithe, please come. If you're at home packaging yourself, package your tithe. If you have your tithe, please come. My prayer is that when we make that kind of a call in this house, half the church will come. Praise God. I don't know whether some of you don't tithe because you don't want to be seen or you're stingy or you're broke. There must be a reason why you don't come to the front. Either you are Nicodemus who likes to see Jesus by night or you just don't pay tithe. Oh, your financial situation is not good. So it means we need to pray for it. So some of you need to be coming. When tithers are coming, you come by faith. 
Even if you have no tithe, you say, God, I'm going to walk there and receive the blessing of the tither until I begin to tithe. Amen. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the things of the spirit are not normal. You've got to do it unusually. So even if you don't have tithe, sometimes you just walk there and say, God, I'm tired of my financial situation. I'm going to walk to the front and receive the blessing of a tither until tithe manifests, which means you will be tithing by faith. Amen. Glory be to God. Lord, we pray the blessing, the blessing. It is the blessing that makes rich and adds no sorrow. Yes. I pray the blessing over your sons and daughters, both here and online. Rebuke the devourer for their sake. Open up the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing that they would have no room for. Yes. Cause everything that they touch and do to prosper. Preserve them from every harm, heart, evil, and danger even their children and their generations. The scripture says, Levi, while he was in the loins of Abraham, paid tithe. Let this covenant speak for generations to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are blessed. You are blessed. Glory is good to see you. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. Shall we get a word offerings? Hallelujah. If you're using the pay bill, 655125, Glory be to God. Let me release you. I'll bring you back. Bring you back. 655125. The account is either offering, tithe, seed. Or even if you just want to bless me, put my name there. Just put my name there. And then they will know what to do. I don't want to tell you that if you want to bless me, I'll give you my number because... Some of you will start sending me dreams you don't understand at 2 a.m. You will not let me rest. Are we ready to give? God made the giving of your people. The seeds of your people. The offerings of your people. Be acceptable in your sight in Jesus name. Amen. Our morning prayers resume this Tuesday in the city center. Every Thursday, no, every Wednesday rather, we have Commonwealth service here, 6.30 p.m. If you're around, if you're available, uh, please make the time and come and be in the service and hear the word and learn. Every Friday, there are prayers here, 6 p.m., Friday prayers. So please make some time and come and pray. And then Sunday, our services are 7 a.m. for kingdom service, 9 a.m. for foundation service, and 11 a.m. for the celebration service, respectively. Praise be to God. The ladies are putting up something. It was supposed to come in February, but it has moved too much. It was um, first mooted by the ladies in the city center, and we thought to open it up. So we will be advising on that. But I think tentatively it is the 17th of March. It is tentatively the 17th of March. There will be registration. So just make sure you have money for registration and you have a fine dress. That's entry. You dress shabby, even if you paid for the ticket, we send you back. Glory be to God. Your silence cannot frustrate me. It is an announcement, not opinion poll. So on the 17th, the ladies in the city center are inviting us to Essence on that side. It's a dinner. Praise God. I thought the ladies here would be excited. They are not. See, you cannot only be hanging out at Tams. Sometimes, just go for fine dinner. You can't just be every time, you know, smoke is coming to you like you're the priest of the Most High. 
No, sometimes dress up, man, and show up. So you have enough time to buy your dinner dress. And there will be good cameras over there, praise God. And if you're married to somebody, please start talking to them now. That Friday, either they cook their meal before, like the Seventh-day Adventists, or they buy their food. And when you go out, they don't keep calling you and asking you, what time are you coming back? What time am I eating? Some of these men are also something else. You are prayer items. Prayer items. If your wife leaves you for two hours, ah, it's trouble. Glory be to God. So that will come up on the 17th, I think, of of March, but on the 5th of March we will have our first uh, Winds of Worship afternoon and we will have that monthly. Glory be to God. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. The workers and the leaders, we are meeting briefly after the service. Um, we just need to talk about how the year will go. We'll need to have a number of meetings just to bring us into alignment. So there are certain things that we need to share with you for ease of operation. So we'll meet shortly after that. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 and 10. And let us not grow weary while doing good. <laughs> For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. It's very easy to lose heart when you're doing good. It's very easy. Very easy to just give up and say, this is not working. Um, and feel like people are never there for you. The prayers you make for them work for them. And you still have the same issues. One lady years ago, um, I was speaking in a certain church quite a while ago. And the Lord told me to pray over her to be used in the gift of healing. So I asked her if she was ready. Prayed over her. And right there in the service, the demonstration, she started praying for the sick and they were getting healed. So I met them after quite a while. Uh, I met her with her friends after a while. And I asked her, is it still, are you still practicing that? And she started tearing up. So I asked the friends, what's going on? And they said, the problem is she goes to hospitals and sees the sick healed, but she has a condition. So she was in conflict. Why is this working for other people and yet it's not working for her? And when you are in those kind of situations, you can easily be drawn back from doing good. Because you will feel that if God is healing others, he should heal you also. Sometimes God will use you to bless others in an area you have need. And that's a test of faith. When God uses you to bless others in an area you have need. So you'll pray for their doors to open, their doors will open. You will be praying for your door to open, your door will not open. And you will be stuck over there. Everybody who comes to you with a CV, you pray for them. Their job opens up. Everybody who comes for you, who needs something to happen, it just opens up. And they give testimonies. They say, you know, so and so, we were praying together. And so they send you a lot of people to come and get prayers. But it doesn't work for you. If your heart is not established, you will grow weary in doing good. Not because you are jealous of their progress. Not because you are envious of their progress and not because you do not want them to make progress, but just because you also feel, when will I also get an answer? Have you ever been there? You don't mind other people going forward, but you're just asking God, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. If you are not careful, the enemy can use that thing to bring up an offense. And so today in the part two of teaching about the household of faith, we will teach, talk a little bit about the element of offense. We'll talk a bit about it at some point because nothing breaks community like offense. Nothing breaks community like offense.
But he says, let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. This thing, it settled, it settled me because I realized that the reward is not from the person, it is from the season. Once I get into the season, the season will produce the people that bring my reward. Sometimes you get frustrated because you're looking at the people you have invested in, people that you have been a blessing to, people that you have helped, people you've stood with, people that you have been there for, and when you were in your time of need, they were not there around you, and you felt that they were using you, but probably they were not supposed to pay you. The season will. When you get into the right season, the season will. Look at verse 10. Is everybody still okay here? Glory be to God. Therefore, as we have opportunity, not as you feel, not when you feel, not when you wake up and feel like doing it, as you have opportunity. Sometimes the opportunity comes when the mood has left. Good afternoon. Praise God. You know, I like this second row here. They are smiling, so it's a soft place. Some of you are too serious, man. We've not even gotten to the serious place of the service. As we have opportunity, when you have an opportunity to do good, the scripture says, don't hold it back. Don't hold it back. Now, that's a test of maturity in faith. Because sometimes you actually feel like I've done too much for people that I shouldn't do anything for them. Let everybody find their own place and find their own way. But the scripture says, as long as you have opportunity, which means if you also have capacity, if it is within your power to do good, don't hold it back. Praise God. Uh, if it is within your power to do good, don't hold back. So sometimes you don't even like the person that you need to do good to. <laughs> but you've got to do it because there's opportunity and you have the ability. For you to stay in the place of doing good, then you have to move your eyes from the people and look at it as service to God. The scripture says, he who gives to the poor lends to the Lord. So when you're giving somebody need, don't look at that person. Just say, God, you know now you owe me. It's the Bible. It says, whoever gives to the poor, lends to the Lord. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Why is this significant to God? You see, if you do something to my child, you have done it to me. If you mistreat my child, you have mistreated me. If you bless my child, you have blessed me. Now, this household of faith, these people, including the ones that annoy you the most, they are children of God. I rebuke your silence in Jesus' name. They are children of God. So, when God looks at us, he looks at his family. That's why Jesus says, whatever you do to the least here, you have done to me. He looks at his family. So when you do good to his child, you have done good to him. When you do good to your biological brother, you have done good to your father. There's a difference. If you understand this mystery, there's a difference. I'm not saying don't do good to your biological family. Please do all the good. You're looking good. You're looking good. You're looking good. But this year, this matter must be settled. Don't be shining here and making people pray prayers they should not pray. Every man who dresses fine, I pray for you to marry this year. You will not trouble my daughters in Jesus' name. Glory be to God.
There's a difference, Pastor Philip. When you do good to your biological brother, you have blessed your father. You have honored your biological father. So the blessing you can receive is what your biological father carries. When you do good to God's child, you have honored the heavenly father. You have entered into a realm of infinite possibilities. So what the enemy normally does is he will tell you, but this is not your blood. Let me tell you, it is your blood. There is the blood that runs from your family, then there is the blood of Jesus that connected us. We are connected by blood. How are you doing? On this side, how are you doing? I don't like your silence. How are you doing? Okay. Vincent, you're good? We are connected by blood. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, we are blood relatives. They're not talking to you? Please tell them loud. We are blood relatives. All right. <laughs> they say blood is thicker than water. We are blood relatives. By the blood of Jesus. So the scripture says, as you do good to everybody, make sure you do it right here. Now, we say that God is a God of community. That God said in Genesis 2.18, it is not good for man to be alone. The trick of the enemy is to get us isolated so that we move away from the place of community. Where everybody is on their own and they are doing their thing. That's the trick of the enemy. There were days in Israel when there was no king and the scripture says everybody did what was right in their own sight. They would move away and just do whatever they wanted. There was no order. So Israel was very easy to defeat because everybody did their own thing. We talked about God setting the solitary in families, that he brings those who are on their own and connects them. For some of you here, this may be the only family that you have for some people. Every place that God puts you has people that he wants you to meet. It is not that when God puts people in your life, the proof of it is that they treat you well. You are in the classroom of God. So in certain seasons, he will put you in a workplace where the assignment of the boss is to deal with your attitude in the name of the Lord. Are you listening to me? If you quit that job because you feel that the boss didn't treat you right, you will have aborted God's process. And wherever you will go to work, he will raise another one like that one. Because his purpose is to bring you into the place of maturity. So he will make sure that he places people like that until they work on your heart for your heart to come to the place of maturity. If you run away from all the bosses, he will give you a spouse that will take the place of that boss. So that spouse will become your prayer item. You see these prayers we keep on inviting you to come to on Friday. And you don't come. Some of you will come by yourself after you get married. You need to understand that God values you more than your marriage. Even if you don't talk to me today, it's fine. Number one, I know that I'm looking good. So there's no way you will diminish it. And if you come close, you will realize I'm smelling good. Glory be to Jesus. So you've got to carry your own atmosphere. There are people who, the purpose of God in their lives will be drawn by the people they are married to, the jobs they are in, or even churches that you belong to. So you will be saying, you know, people are mistreating you, but God has appointed them to work on your character to bring you to the place of fulfillment of purpose. There are certain things that you will not receive until you learn certain things. The first church I served in, I was sat down, is it two or three times? Sat down two or three times. Well, be well in Jesus' name. The first church that I, I served in, I was sat down three times. One, because of my hairstyle. Then 
I know you're wondering which one it was. <laughs> I sat down. It was a very conservative setup. And not just the church because in the 90s, you couldn't do too much. In the 90s, you wear jeans, you look like you're not a believer. I mean, in the 90s, you wear jeans, you're an unbeliever. T-shirt, jeans, no way. You're not born again. So they'd look for you. Okoka vizuri ndugu. That means your wokovu was coming, but it did not fully load. So they'd come for you. So they sat me down because of my hairstyle. I had this hairstyle. You know, I had a conflict of culture. I'm in college, and then I'm in church. And then in college, there's stuff that we are doing. So I had made my hair. Uh, I treated it. I had treated it. So when I came there, they felt like I was going to influence everybody badly. They sat me down. And another time again, I don't know whether it was my hair or I had some, I had some jewelry. Then they sat me down. Then another time they sat me down because we were courting. In those days, you didn't court openly. Courtship was supposed to be in the spirit. It manifests on the wedding day. You don't understand what I'm talking about. If two of you are seen together at any one point, you have sinned. So this was me, you know, the groovy guy. This was me. We go to sit in restaurants and stuff. Then you have these brothers who will come. They walk into a restaurant. They see the two of you sitting at a restaurant. They go and report you. We saw them together. We were sat down. The only issue I had is that that particular time, when they sat us down, they brought her back quickly. So I wondered, okay, so if both of us are partners in crime, why am I the one who is sitting down? But do you know what God was doing? He was shaping me for the future. I wish I had believers talking to me over here. It looked difficult at that particular point because those days we were not changing churches. It wasn't this stuff you do nowadays, you know, you rebuke somebody and then they quit. Those days, you stay there. In fact, the preacher did not need to look for summons. The people were the summon. <laughs> the people were the summon. There's a message one time that was preached and I knew they were waiting for me to go and repent, but I had not committed the sin that they were preaching about. I used to stay there. And you know what God was doing? He was building me for where I was going. I wish I had a believer here. He needed to build me for where I was going so that I understand that life will not always give me what I want. People will not always treat me the way I desire. That the toughness of God was going to build me to survive in all kinds of situations. I am friends with the people who did that to me. I look back. I see the benefit of it. God saw where he was taking me. He planted me there. I thought it was unfair at that time. But God saw where I was going. It needed to be solid. I went back, I read my Bible. And read it and read it and read it. And I kept on reading this. In 1 Corinthians, I kept on reading that if your meat is an offense to somebody else, don't eat it. I read it so many times, Festus, till I shaved my hair. Nobody told me to. I realized that my hairstyle is good for me, but if it is offending the other person, then I should bring it down. Oh, it's different nowadays. Do what you want. If they don't like it, let them deal with it. <laughs> uh, you will not fulfill purpose. There are places where you will make adjustments. There are places you will go to and you will have to change how you dress. Otherwise, you will not fulfill purpose. This is who I am. That's why you will stay where you are. I'm telling you. There are places you go to and you can't even dress well. There will be a disconnect between you and the people God sent you to. So you've got to dress down. To reach them. Paul says, I became all things to all men. 
if I might win some. Glory be to God. So this community here has people that you need now. These people are the ones you need now. It may change as you go, but for now, this is your two For now. Now I'll tell your neighbor, get used to being my neighbor. You're helping their attitude. You're helping their attitude. It's okay. Tell them, for now, get used to being my neighbor. Just, yeah, get to know me. Enjoy the season. I'm telling you. <laughs> when you have grown to the point where God needs to move you to the next stage, he will. We're not saying die here, no. But for now, these are the people that God has connected you with. So, Within these people, there are the benefits of connection. There are things you are praying for and things you are looking for that God has placed in the hands of the people who are here. Take me to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. For the what? The equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Let's just pause there. We need, to, we need to talk about this. I know you know it, but you know that the work of the ministry is not done here. It is where you work. It is where you live. It is the people you meet. That's where the work of the ministry is done. So when you come around, we equip you to go and do ministry. All right? God is in marketplace ministry. Sunday is the day we come for equipping. But your ministry begins tomorrow. Verse 13. Till, please read with me. Till we all come. Pause there. Let's read it again. Till we all come. Let's read that again. Till we all. So God doesn't want some people to come to that level while others are not. He wants everybody to come to a certain dimension. He is thinking about community. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Verse, 5, verse 14. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, that is Christ. Verse 16. Let's read verse 16. From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. Let me have some four people from the back would be good. If I can have, uh, you are smiling, so please come. Come with your neighbor and the other neighbor. When men like me call you, you jump and walk on people. Because this is an opportunity. Glory be to God. Let me have some four people. Four. I can't have four people? No, no, no. The two of you sit down. Gibran, come. Come, come. Come, Frida. Come. Your chances are getting higher and higher. Your obedience has reached heaven. Okay. So you lock your, you, you lock your, your arms right there. Now, this is what the scripture says. The whole body comes from the Lord. The whole body, the body of Christ comes from the Lord. And it is joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. What joins them is what each one supplies. What joins us is what each and every person supplies. So if Gibran holds back what he has, then he has robbed this body of whatever he has to supply. Are you listening to me, people? If he holds back, then this body becomes deficient of the nutrients that he carried. 
So some people carry grace, some people carry structure, some people carry love, some people carry prayer, some people carry intercession, some people carry uh, encouragement. When this person draws back, then this body is deprived. So when the one who loves stops connecting, this body will be love deficient. The one who encourages, say, nobody encouraged me when I was going through something. The body begins to lack encouragement because not everybody has been given the same thing. Somebody is supposed to encourage, another one is supposed to pray. If the one who was supposed to pray stops praying, this body will be deficient in prayer. Maybe he was given the grace for finances. So each one of us coming, he will come in with his love. She will come in with encouragement. He will come in with finances. He will come in with care. Then the body grows together. So this is how the enemy makes the body weak. He makes him go on the side with his thing. Makes him go on the side. Oh, they just want my money. And then this one is like, I'm not encouraging anybody. Let everybody carry their own encouragement. Even me, I encourage myself. David encouraged himself in the Lord. And then this one will be saying, am I the one who died for people? God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So whoever wants love, get it from Jesus. By the time you do that, the body is fragmented. It is weak because the enemy has isolated the people because what joins us is what we supply. Ooh. So whatever he has is not his. It's not. Are you listening to me, people? Good God. Are you listening? Am I in new birth? Let me check again. Am I in new birth? All right. Let me see your Bibles. Let me see. This is how I know I'm in new birth. Let me see your notebook. Let me see your checkbook. You see, you see, you see. This is new birth me too. <laughs> you can't come into new birth without your checkbooks. So, this is what God connects us with. You come in with what God has given you, then you connect. So, as he is drawing from her, she's drawing from him. And then he will come into this joint as well and he will supply. So each one of them, then God balances the supply. Then he will come in. Come, 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 come. And he will come in and bring what he has. This is what the enemy does not want. He doesn't want that. So he wants everybody looking for their own thing. You pray for yourself. You sow for yourself. You encourage yourself. You have to love yourself. You have to do makeup and look at yourself. <laughs> Everything is just around yourself, self, self. Because he has isolated you from everybody. Do you know there are people who are just anointed to meet you and say, you're looking good today. I'm not talking about flirting. I'm talking about compliments. I'm not talking about those ones who meet you and tell you about your legs. I'm talking about the ones who say you're looking smart. Oh man, let me come up here, man. I feel like preaching and singing this thing. I'm not talking about flatting. I'm talking about compliments. There are people who, when they meet you, you feel your spirit go up. And that is their assignment. When they are not in the compound, you feel it. Am I in the right house? When they're not there, you feel it because when you meet them, they have a way of lifting your spirit. Some people just lift up people with their smile. Others just lift up people with a hug. Others just lift up people by their presence. When they come in, you just feel like demons are moving. They've not even done anything, but you just feel like order is coming in. So when they don't come in, people will remain depressed. Hallelujah. See, let me give you some good stuff about my dad. I've told you about the other side of my dad, but I remember this the other day. Even though my dad would be this guy who would drink a lot, I had this brother who was the kind of guy who will sell everything because he's also going to drink. I mean, he'd sweep the house if he had the opportunity. If he had a truck, you'd find that house empty. He'd sell everything and go and drink and come back. He would cause chaos every time. Come in the night, cause chaos because he would know that if he causes chaos, then my mom would negotiate by giving him money to send him away. So he would do it very deliberately. Whenever there would be guests from church, he would cause drama. So that he is sent away. Because now he knows we don't want drama when they are guests. I know your family was okay. Let me tell you about my family. Your family has no drama. So let me tell you about my family. But I realized, I was thinking about it the other day. I realized, mercy, 
that as long as my father was there, drunk as he was, my brother would behave. You see, everybody has what they bring. You're not talking to me over here. No matter how drunk he was, my brother would know the head of this house. Lord have mercy. Slap your neighbor, tell them you need me. You may not even feel like you need me, but you need me. Go ahead and talk to them. Tell them, neighbor, you need me in ways you don't even know, in places you don't even imagine. Woo. Glory be to God. So as long as my brother would know my dad is there, you know how he would know? My dad would be snoring. Once he comes around and he hears that snore, he goes back. So that snore is like God would turn it like the roaring of a lion. Ah, God can use anything. <laughs> Glory be to God. Thank you. So each one of us comes together by what we supply. Not everybody has to look like they have money. There are people whose contribution to your life will never be money. It will be wisdom. It will be structure. It will be peace. It will be counsel. It will be love. It will be friendship. Every time I go through trouble, my friend Apostle Italy will show up. Even when I don't know where he is. Even when I've thought he's outside of the country or somewhere. When he knows there's trouble, personal, not, not ministry. Anybody can relate with you here. He will show up. We were burying my uncle in November. When they called for the family to come, he also came. He also came to speak. Yes. <laughs> and nobody could stop him. Because every time I would visit my grandmother, he would come. So they would see him. That's his role. And he plays it perfectly. Don't look down on people. Listen, don't look down on people. When we were going to bury my mother, the first person who took the jember to dig the ground was him. <laughs> you know, if you have a tire burst, it is not motorists who will change your tires. So you can't be driving, splashing water on people. Why are they on the road? They should buy their own cars. <laughs> it's fine. If you break down along the way over there, it's those guys on foot who are coming to help you. Everybody has something to supply. Ooh. And the scripture says we should do good to one another. You know financial situations, they can turn around overnight. Somebody can just wake up and realize that the father they thought is their father is not their father. Their real father has shown up and the guy owns seashells. And their life changes. <laughs> These girls you despise here. I have a daughter. She took care of Dexter when she came out of high school. I met her in 2002. She was in form 2. She cleared school, came and lived with us took care of Dexter, based in Mombasa. <laughs> we can't talk on the same level. She respects me, but we can't talk on the same level. When she's talking about school fees and she's telling me it's not much, I want to remind I'm her father. Because <laughs> she just got married to a settled man. So even these sisters you mistreat here, Go very easy. <laughs> These situations change overnight. <laughs> she named her son after Dexter. But we're not playing on the same league at all. <laughs> But she was, she was taking care of Dexter in the house. 
when we would want to go out, she, the only person I ever saw who would say, don't go with the baby. Leave the baby with me. Gave her whole heart to that. I remember one time, we were meeting in a certain place, my mom came around, and my mom said, because you have taken your time to raise their child, God will bless you. If it is with money, <laughs> so it's not just finances you have to look at people with the value they carry on the inside is it Ecclesiastes 9 16 let me look at this let me look at I'm about to close I've got just five minutes my timekeeper has told me oh you're wondering which one verse 15 Are you still here? All right. Shall we read? You know, when I tell you to read, it's also so that you don't doze off. Okay? There's nothing spiritual about it. Just to keep you awake. Now, there was found in it. Let's take it back to verse 14. Take it back to verse 14. There was a little city with few men in it. And a great king came against it. And besieged it. And built great snares around it. Verse 15. Now there was found in that little city. A poor wise man. Pause there. Pause there. The man was poor. You're not talking to me. The man was poor. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look down on people. Some of the wisest people. Look the simplest. There was found in that city a poor wise man. And he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. There are people here with solutions to your marriage. But you despise them. There are people here who can advise you on what to do with business. But you despise them. There are people who have done what you're doing. They either succeeded or they failed. But you disregard them. They are either not your level or not your type. <laughs> and you will miss out on what God has brought around you. Please, don't just run in and run out. There's a reason we come into the sense of community. Just run in and run out. Okay, maybe nobody can help you, but probably you can help us. Maybe you're fine. You have everything you need. But in this compound, there will be somebody who needs something that you have. And it may not be money. It may just be insight, instruction, encouragement. Some of them just need to know that you didn't get to where you got to overnight. They're on the brink of giving up if you stood with them for five minutes after the service and you told them how you struggled and failed and struggled and failed and still came up. That will work for them better than the preaching I'm doing now. Because when I preach about it, they'll say, well, that is him. He's anointed to do that. But when they meet somebody in the compound, they say, oh, that's really encouraged me. And they leave the place built up. Even your testimony is resource. Are you listening, people? If you're still here, wave your hand and say, I'm here. So don't treat the people in the household of faith like they matter nothing or they mean nothing to you. Glory be to God. I've got people in this house, even though I'm the leader here, I've got people in this house I have conversations with often. But I draw from their wisdom. I draw from their knowledge. So when I am in a place where I need to speak about something, nobody will ask me who told you that. I'll just act like I was born knowing it. Glory be to God. 
Because even I learn from the people I lead. I can't know everything. Somebody knows so much about construction. Somebody knows something. When we sit with Pastor Philip in the office, you know, I don't like Pastor Philip's humility. I don't like it. I don't even want it. That thing can make you die poor. Because when we talk about some things, then he will drop one or two things about the workplace. And I'm like, what is this man doing with all this knowledge? If it were me, if it were me, my profile, management consultant, what are you talking about? But Pastor Philip is so humble, he will just see things happening and he's quiet. You'll feel like he doesn't know. No, if I know one thing, you will know that I know it. <laughs> but you see, those interactions, they become enrichment. You can't know everything. You can't be everything. So they become enrichment. Everybody you are seeing here has something God deposited in them that could be a blessing to you. And there is something God deposited in you that would be a blessing to these people. So as you have opportunity, do good, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Simple thing like, okay, so you're going to be driving out of this place. You are alone. Love my space. You know me, I, I just love my space. If I start interacting with these people, they'll bring me issues. I love my space. Give somebody a lift. How long will it take them to be in your car? <laughs> just five minutes or ten. Drop them. Drop them. You are an adult. You can control conversations. Talk about the economy. Open a conversation that they will have to research about. But you've given them a lift. As you leave, just start other things like that. When you're coming to church, you leave your neighbors in their houses. That's an opportunity to do good to somebody. How many of you in the course of the week, you just check up on somebody and say, can I go with you to church on Sunday? You don't have to always have money. See, we must move away from this commercial mentality in our generation where we think money is everything. What about if they're not coming, you just pick their children? Say, can I go with your children so that they go to Sunday school and drop their children to church? And say, so I'll drop them back to you. And the kids go back home and tell their parents the things that they have learned. What about the clothes that you have? Not the torn ones. The ones you wore once. You know, my mother was... This kind of a person, I don't know why Marcy is laughing, because I feel Marcy is in the same WhatsApp group. My mother was the kind of person, if there is a function, she buys a dress for that function, and if there's another function, the other one is expired. It cannot be repeated. Every function with its own dress. Some of you are like that. So you have kept things, because you said, this one, I wore for the anniversary of 2017. They sew it in 2017. I cannot wear it again. Bless somebody with that thing. If you're here, say, I hear you. I'm finishing. My time is up. I'm finishing. But look around for opportunities to do good. Look around. Find out whether you can be a blessing to somebody. There are opportunities for jobs, for business. Mentorship. Mentorship. Just bring people into apprenticeship in what you do. Tell them from the onset, I will not pay you, but you will learn things here. Flip side. Flip side. And I said this before. If I am going to recommend Edith, she better live up to the recommendation. So that she's not recommended to a job, she messes it up in a month, so the next time I cannot recommend Prince to the same place. This is what some people do. Now you cannot take anybody else because Edith has closed that door. Then Prince needs to walk into it and then Jules needs to walk into it. If she did well, all these guys would enter the same door 
But you find a person that is recommended, goes in and does their own things. Every time somebody recommends you somewhere, remember you don't just carry your name. You carry their name. If you want to mess up, please don't go in because they still have to help other people. Never forget this lady who called me because I'd recommended somebody to her and then she needed to fire this person. And so because of the respect she had for me, she didn't know how to go about it. Do you know what it did? Stopped asking me for employees. Not even just because that one didn't work, but because she wants to retain the power to hire and fire. She doesn't want to have people that she's afraid of firing because she has respect for me. Some of you, even when people recommend you circles, <laughs> it's not that you're not on WhatsApp. It's just that you know you owe everywhere. You're a believer. You're here. You are leaving people to pay your loans. Even here, you just came in because where you used to attend, <laughs> people are looking for you. <laughs> so you're new here you will confuse us you borrow from five six people then in a short while you move to Mlolongo assemblies of whatever no not new but we, we will find you the scripture says he that has friends must act friendly if we are going to promote one another in your business let your business be credible if you promise that you will deliver, deliver. If you cannot deliver, then tell the people, we have delays. If somebody stands in for you and you get money from somewhere, if you cannot pay, please communicate and say, I'm not able to pay in this time like I thought. Can I have some time? Don't make people come to church. We think they're first time believers. First time then they come to Mukam and they say, I came here looking for brother so and so. Because brother sons, you know, he took our money from our chama for four years. We saw his photos on Facebook, so I came to look for him here. So we have to cover you up. You guys are laughing, but I'll tell you from the ministerial perspective, we get a lot of things. We get stuff. There's a gentleman who was in the city. Can't remember which year that was. And we were being looked for, but he had already left. And they had seen him in the photos of new birth. So they knew the place to come and find him. His church. Actually, they went to church. By then, Pastor Benjamin was there. And they found Pastor Benjamin there. They say, we're looking for this person. He had disappeared with people's money from somewhere for a while. We will start betting before we post photos. <laughs> we look for criminal records. Because we can be shot on the road for no reason. So by the time they came in, he wasn't there. They found a way, looked for him, found him wherever he was. The wife was being spoken to. She was expectant. She was being spoken to when the husband is in a cell. She had no idea he had been taking money. These men you marry that always have money, do you know what they do? I'm asking you during the day. Do you know what they do? Oh, you're just blessed by the gifts. One day somebody will come for you. Everybody here has something to bring. Glory be to God. Let me pause there. I said I was going to talk about the other element that hinders community, but I'll talk about it next Sunday. I should not rush this teaching, right? Why are you quiet on me? Because you know you won't be here next Sunday. I'm not going to rush it. But I will talk about the things that make people not have sense of community. Including in their biological families. The first one is offense. You have your own blood that you have not talked to for long. Because you're offended. So now you live like you have nobody. Because... Both sides 
have used to handle the offense. Now you live like you have no brothers or sisters. Some of you, you've not talked to your parents for a while. It's like you have no family. But there was an offense and you have refused to address the offense. For the record, Jesus said, Luke 17 verse 1. Let me go. Luke 17 verse 1. Then he said to his disciples, can you read with me? It is impossible that no offenses should come. Ladies and gentlemen, workplace, family, marriage, children, friendships, neighborhoods, church, anywhere, it is impossible that offenses don't come. What makes relationships work is the ability to deal with the offense. It is impossible that offenses should come, that no offenses should come. But what to him through them, through whom they do come. So you cannot live an offense-free life, but you need to learn how to handle that. If somebody hurt you, let them know. If something is affecting you, let them know. Speak about it. Don't be this generation of just cut off for my peace. You know, me, I don't have time to tell people just cut off for my peace. You will cut off until you will have nothing to cut off. I'm telling you, one day you'll just find you are by yourself in life. You have cut off everybody. There are people who need to be in your life. So you handle it. Handle it. Sit down with them. Tell them. When you did this, this is what it did to me. Handle it and go past offense because it is not good that man should be alone. Please rise upon your feet. for a few people if you can and if you're comfortable if you're not I will understand you may be new or you may be you may be reserved so I don't want to offend you <laughs> but if you can if you're the kind of person who can go to people look for several people and tell them you need me in this season <laughs> yeah glory be to God Let me tell you a few of you for just to help you just to help you very quickly just a few things if you are getting into business you're setting up retail you're getting into business or you want to know how to deal with your workers or something now forget the pastor philip you see doing intercession here talk to him this man was managing so many people managing so many stores at some point he had to ask them to split when nakumat was nakumat so don't get to know him only by the preacher you see Talk to him. When I'm looking for things to do, like structure something, conversations from the side, I had to look for something. We were doing a church structure thing. I talked to Mike. Mike will be this quiet guy over there. But there's too much brains there. You hear what I'm talking about? I'll dig in over here. If I need to know something very quickly, very quickly from the hospital, I'll talk to Dr. Tari. I'll talk to Deacon George very quickly. So, when I want to go to it, I'm not the type that likes going to hospital. If I need to take anybody there, is the first one I go. Mark the words, take somebody there. He's the first one I will call. 
He'll find a way. So even myself, I will just have benefits in here. Glory be to God. I need to do my quick research. I asked the people in the city center the other day, last week. I said, how many of you even know that Levy is a graphic designer? They see a pianist. That's all they see over the years. The news you will watch on NTV, that's the guy who does the graphics. But they'll see a pianist. I asked them, how many of you know that your worship leader has an MBA? The worship team that Edith leads, they do not know that she's an MBA. I know you also don't know because you just see one tiny girl putting you like, put your hands together and you're like, what? You, God will judge you. <laughs> Get to know people around here. Find out what Jules does apart from playing drums. They are gifts in this place. Praise be to God. Where's Geoffrey? Where did he go? He disappeared. Geoffrey. All right. Emmanuel is a wood engineer. No, you're trying to figure out that. Manuel is a wood engineer. Anything to do with wood. He was fixing the doors the other day. He's the one who did our canteen over there. He does a lot of stuff here. So apart from the nonsense he puts on social media. <laughs> you know he puts nonsense, eh? <laughs> Until I stop taking photos with him. Because it does not. But you know, every house, you can't deny your children. There will be one child who comes in drunk when, when the visitors have sat down. And he will say something that is very embarrassing. But this guy would fix your house, will fix your doors, will do your woodwork and all of that. So why don't we get to know what skills people have? Mukami's first degree was in community development. The second one was in human resource. But she has worked mostly in the last five years around logistics. I know you see her posting my stuff and you think she's idle, sits over here. She's been doing most of the logistics work with WFP for the last five years, running the stuff in Somalia. You will be passing people here who will be helping your life. Get to know people. Bring what you have. Learn what they have. Build what they have. Promote what people do. If somebody has a butchery, that's where we go and buy meat. <laughs> we change. That's where we go and buy meat. If somebody has a cab, that's the one we call Sunday. Praise God. For the last seven years or eight, apart from creativity designs, it is my protocol guy in the city center, Martin, who dresses me. For seven years, I work with my people. So I pray that we will do good to the household of faith. Is there anybody who came to this service and is not born again? Let's get you to be part of the kingdom of God and the household of God. If you're not born again, kindly raise your hand. I want to lead you into the prayer, to the confession. We'd be so glad to do that. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Next Sunday, invite somebody to church. Don't come by yourself. This ninja attitude, please leave it. One man said one time, it is only snakes that don't walk together. Sheep walk together. A snake, after it is born, it is gone. All right. If there are no visitors, remember, Wednesday, we have our service. Friday, we have our service. Then the three services on Sunday. All right. Turn around, find somebody to share the words of the grace with. Glory be to God. Now, I've talked about businesses and all opportunities. 
I will not, I will not forget to talk about another opportunity that is available in this house that you must take advantage of. In this house, there are spouses. I knew you would behave like that. These men you are seeing here are husbands. These ladies you are seeing here are wives. Stop praying for things God has provided. God, send me, send me. Sending what? And one is sitting next to you. <laughs> there are husbands here. There are wives here. Glory be to God. All the ones that you see well. Ukiona vya elea. Avikuzaliwa, vimeundwa. All those you see, they've been made. They've been made. Every wonderful wife has been made. Every wonderful husband has been made. So you also take your own and make it. Oh wait, whatever you have not made, you will not keep. Glory be to God. Okay. Share the words of the grace in this place. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ <laughs> and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. As we always say in this house, Shalom, Irene. Peace and prosperity. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. Nothing shall be broken in your life. The Lord bless you, keep you, watch over you, cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen and amen. The workers and the leaders, we meet, we meet very shortly.